Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. it is okay it's the ramble we go until uh, midnight tonight i was trying to figure out what to do tonight uh yeah i was trying to figure out what to do uh let me turn why is why why don't i sound loud enough oh well to hell with it anyway uh, uh, I, uh, I was going to, uh, I, 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 I don't, I haven't known what to do tonight. Okay. Um, uh, because, uh, I don't have a, uh, interview that I've done that I could play during this half hour and I don't have, um, uh, anything to talk about particularly. <laughs> Uh, and uh, on top of that, I'm starting. The, the, we made, we started the uh, video off late. I guess I, a lot of you weren't getting the signal because, uh, but we started in time for the show uh, because I pushed the wrong button here, and it's all because it, there was a change tonight. And as I get older, I'm used to doing things in a specific order, and if they're out of order, uh, they cause me problems. Okay, so tonight I get a get a thing today from uh, Damien that he's got some errands he's got to do tonight and he can't get home in time to do his show. So what I uh, what I just uh, you know uh, uh, do whatever uh, I guess you would say play a rerun or just know that he's not going to be there and uh, to take appropriate action as it were and. Uh, so that's fine. I mean, Damien takes time off every now and then as well. He should. Uh, he's, ta you know, I don't take any time off and I really should. In fact, next Thursday, uh, I will not start the show at 10 o'clock. We'll play some old video or whatever, or audio rather, um, uh, from the 24-7 until I get here because I'm going to the theater and I'm going at a 7.30 show which should be out about 9.30, but that means I'm not, I may not get back home in time. So I may be starting the show late. And I feel guilty about that. And I shouldn't feel guilty about it because, hell, I don't take any days off. And I should take quite a few and go do stuff. You know, I did one night off and, uh, and uh, Jack did it for me. And that was very nice. But, you know, soon I'm going to have to take a week off or a couple of weeks off here and there. Because uh, I've just, we, a girlfriend and I haven't taken a vacation in like six years or something like that. And I really feel I owe it to her, you know. So, uh, uh, but I, I doggedly do this show every night. And so tonight I thought, well, I don't feel like talking for a half hour. So I have a, a tape, a video, a tape, a video of that I, of the interview I did with Penn Jillette up and waiting to go. But then I decided, nah. I, I, I can hold off and do that on another day. So uh, I have no idea what, uh, what I'm going to do for a half hour. But uh, because I, I you know, uh, I, I, as I get older, uh, I have less adventures. You know, I used to have a lot of adventures. I could come on the air and talk to you about what I did over the weekend and something interesting. Then, and nothing, nothing interesting happens to me, you know. Girlfriend comes home from work. We sit there, watch TV together. We predictably watch the news. And then we watch some shows that I may have banked for us to watch uh, that are our favorites. And then she goes and starts watching some, binge watching some series. She's watching the Durrells of Corfu now. So I have to go in the other room and watch whatever's on my list to watch. That's about exci as exciting as our life gets. And I, that, that bothers me because it used to be that I used to just have all kinds of adventures, you know? And uh, uh, I just don't anymore. And I, I don't, 
you know. So I can't sit here for a half hour and tell you about something amazing that happened to me today, but I will tell you something that I did get. This morning, the doorbell rings at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, and luckily I was awake, and I get this, this uh, FedEx uh, thing, and in it is a letter. Yeah, FedEx, a letter, all right? Um, because, damn it, I had, just, I, I had better damn well uh, uh, get uh, uh, this thing, you know. They couldn't just mail this letter to me. So I want to play something, first of all, uh, because uh, w we really won't have a reason to play this much longer. And so I thought I would play it for you so that you can hear it one last time or one last couple of times because we're going to have to put this one uh, to bed. This is an Internet Network news break. I.P. Bingsley reporting. Our top story, the Great American Broadcast Network, otherwise known as GabNet, is now a TuneIn partner. TuneIn, the world's largest audio network, has joined forces with GabNet, the world's most innovative talk network. GabNet's partnership with TuneIn means that listeners now have three main ways to listen to GabNet programming. GabNet.net, TuneIn.com, and the convenient TuneIn app for smartphones. To participate in the network's innovative citizen panels on GabNet programs, use Skype and type the handle GabNet Live or call on your phone 347-352-0079. For more information on this network, its programs, and its hosts, log on to GabNet.net. That's GabNet.net. This has been an Internet Network news break. Now, why are we going to have to put that to uh, to bed uh, and, and uh, put it in uh, into the into the vaults of that which used to be but never will be? Okay, so I get this letter, ten o'clock this morning, FedEx, right? It had to cost them at least I don't know eight dollars, right? I don't know what is an overnight letter envelope from, well, I don't know if it was overnight, probably was sent, you know, Express Saver, it says on there. And it's from TuneIn. They're cheap because they went Express Saver. And it reads, Dear Audio Partner, so they don't even really know who the fuck they're sending it to. It's, it's addressed to GabNet, all right? And it says, uh, Dear Audio Partner, References made hereby to the TuneIn Memorandum of Understanding entered into on 1615, called the agreement, and by and between GapNet and TuneIn Incorporated. Parentheses, TuneIn. Please accept this email as the required 60 day written notification of TuneIn's election of termination, such that the agreement shall not auto renew. On one six nineteen, <sighs> rejected by TuneIn. Now this doesn't mean anything, really. Are we still going to be on TuneIn? Yes, we're still going to be on TuneIn. Uh, anybody can be on TuneIn. All they have to do is, you know, sign up for it. Uh, what we had was they, uh, they, uh, uh, they either they came to me or I went to them or. There was somebody who turned me on to this guy at TuneIn who said, would you like to be a TuneIn partner? And I said to myself, well, what's that? And he said, well, you just sign up and then you're, you partner with us. And what we'll do is we'll give you a certain amount of publicity and things like that when you first sign up with us. And I thought, well, that couldn't hurt, okay? So they, we did it. And for like about the first week, they plugged us, all right? And then... For the rest of it, which is, I guess, here, a three-year period? What, 15, yeah, 16, 17, 18. Yeah. Wait a minute. It's all of 15, all of 16, all of 17, and then all of 18. Four years. Four years ago. Now, I got this, and I went, wow. I'd forgotten I'd even signed that thing because they didn't do shit for us. 
you know, so why, what, you know, why do they even have to get out of the agreement? They didn't do anything about it in the first place. So I, 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 it was, it came as a shock to me. It was, I kind of bothered me because, oh, they're, they're rejecting me. And I'm going, what are they rejecting me for? I mean, I get more, uh, 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 I, I got no juice out of them at all. They, that was, I mean, a lot of people use TuneIn to listen to the shows, but all they're listening to is the 24-7, you know. So that's all they're getting. They're not getting, like, each of the individual shows on demand. You can get us, at that time when that thing was uh, first recorded, I guess, uh, uh, Rob, if you're listening, you recorded that. It had to be almost... Uh, uh, four years ago, four years ago, five years, four years ago. Wait a minute. Again, 15, 16, 17, 18, four years ago. So when that was recorded, we, we, we were thrilled. We were getting on something, you know. But now, uh, let's see, we were, we're on iTunes. Uh, we have our own on demand on the gabnet.net site. We are also on, uh, we're on, um, uh, we're on some things I don't even remember we're on, but we're on Spotify. That's our newest acquisition is Spotify. Um, we're on Spotify. Uh, we, um, what else? Uh, we're, you can get us on, uh, what, what is it? Um, um, oh, God. I can't even, I can't remember them all, okay? Um, uh, but um, we're on just about uh, everything including TuneIn, okay? But TuneIn didn't do shit for us. This agreement that we had, no wonder they ended it. They forgot they even had it. And there's probably some lawyer who was sitting there going, you know, and it says, dear TuneIn partner, is it? What is it? Uh, yeah, TuneIn partner, that's what we were called. They probably did away with the program altogether, so they had to send out FedExes to any you know number of hundreds of people or thousands of people that they did partnerships with because they no longer saw that as valuable because they weren't acting on it. it. It wasn't getting them anything. We, for a while, kept making a big deal about GabNet a, you know, um, uh, tune-in partner. Uh, as you may remember, we used to say it all the time. Uh, but uh, it, it, uh, we, I stopped saying it because I didn't see any value in saying it. It didn't, and we weren't getting anything back for it, you know? What I was getting back for it is every time I went and looked for GabNet on the TuneIn, uh, there was GabNet. It came up under a search of GabNet. Okay, it comes up. Uh, and then uh, uh, below it, it says, here are a lot of other things you might enjoy. <laughs> you know, and I didn't see the one. I went to other things when under the other things you might enjoy, we ever showed up. So... It was, a, it was a real shock to the system this morning to be rejected like this. My God, our partnership with, uh, with TuneIn is, being, is ending. Uh, they no longer want us as a partner. And I'm thinking to myself, now in four years, what the fuck did we get out of that? Let's see, it's 15, 16, 17, 18. Yeah. What, uh, in four years, what the fuck did we get out of that? And the answer was, goose egg so anyway i should have sent them a letter of cancellation i should have beat them to the punch like i should have done it three years ago when they weren't doing shit for us but they were still be on we'll still be on tune in that's not a problem so you know i took them off our uh, our mast and replaced them with spotify a link to spotify where you can get all the programs you just uh if, under search if you go to spotify uh, on some browsers, if you hit our Spotify link, uh, it will take you to just Spotify. So then you have to go search and just search Gabnet. That's the only name you have to put in. It reacts to that. And then all uh, five shows we have up there, we have, you know, my show, we have The Exchange, we have uh, J Jack Bishop's show, uh, we have the arena, and we, we have uh, Michael Snyder's movie review, since I really wanted to foist him on everybody. Uh, and, and there you can go, and you can hear, you know, usually it's last night's show. Um, you know, so let's see here. Uh, what is it? Migrate? 
I can't. Oh, okay. Oh, here's here's the other thing that's happening. Uh, wait a minute. Uh, do you have that? Okay. Uh, I have. Uh, <laughs> uh, and, and, and I have. Um, uh, I'll tell you a story. Tell you a couple of stories because they 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 kind of all fit together. Um. Tonight we're going to be using Skype, but as of tonight. The version of Skype we're using is no longer supported. But that doesn't seem to bother me. It doesn't seem to bother me at all. Uh, uh, because uh, it seems like Skype will work. Well, we'll see if it works tonight. I, 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 there's no reason why it shouldn't. I tried calling myself from another device, and I got it okay, and everything's fine. But as you know, the wonderful people out there in... Uh, in uh, what do you call it land, uh, Skype land, have decided that they want to force everybody to go to Skype 8. Uh, and uh, 8 point fuck, as I like to call it. And uh, so they're saying we will no longer support Skype 7. Oh, well, I like using Skype 7 oh because I like that I can get all the citizen panel on one page where the new Skype, you can only get four people at a time and a bunch of bubbles of their pictures up at the top. And secondly, if I do it on this PC, I can't bring up the screen. I have to go through another process that will then feed me a picture of the screen. And uh, that is uh, one step further than I have to go now, okay? Uh, if we have to do it eventually, I suppose I will give it a try. I could do it also from my piece, my Mac, over in this other computer over here, uh, and then I could I could do it simply as uh, you know. Uh, I would have to explain to you how I get that picture on the screen, but it's basically I find the the, the browser the uh, Skype program, and then I say I want the screen, and I configure it so it looks good. This other thing I have to launch a program to then get the picture from the screen because this. I can't do it like I used to. Okay, so what I don't like is that people don't like to do things, don't like you to do things that they don't want you to do. Uh, and uh, in the case of Skype, they want everybody to go to the new Skype 8.0 because it's wonderful. It sucks. It's bloated. It's also, I understand, and I haven't been able to find this out yet, a memory hog, okay? Uh, it just eats up a lot of memory in your computer. So uh, it, it really sucks, and it, really, and it looks terrible on the screen. I cannot configure it for our show very well. So I'm very used to the way it was, and hopefully I'll be able to use this for a long time to come, and they won't do something to botch it up so I can't use it. And what's really good about it is now that they're not forcing me, you know, now that they're, they've had their, this is their date that they're, oh, we're not going to, what they're not going to do is they're not going to do anything about 7.0. They're not going to support it. Uh, they're not going to fix it if it goes wrong or whatever. Okay, fine. I'm fine with that. Leave it as it is. Don't touch it because every time you tried to upgrade it, it got worse. All right? Uh and uh, just just let me keep using it. But what I was getting notations all the time saying, you've got to upgrade now. You've got to upgrade now. The only thing that I'm getting now, okay, is, is, uh, a, uh, uh, is, is that, which says this version of Skype will be discontinued soon to continue using Skype, blah, 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 and then update to Skype. Well, before, what it was doing every hour on the hour was having a thing pop up saying, uh, hey, do you want to, you know, why don't you just put in the new version of Skype? And then you had to push, push not now. But it doesn't seem to be going off today. So maybe that's a good thing about the change, okay? Anyway, so I bring that up because that starts today. And then what I was looking at, at, the, other, at the other, on the other machine, we, we use a thing, what we have to do, I don't like. I really, you know, a lot of people don't want to know how they know how the cow is killed, okay, uh, or slaughtered. Uh, but let me tell you how the how the how the, the feast is made here. Uh, we have a thing called encoder. The encoder takes what I say here, what I do here, 
the audio encoder, and, and sends it out to a server that then splays the signal out to all of you out there and you pick it up, all right? So you get it? Like the encoder I described to Jack Bishop once when I was trying to make him understand the whole thing is like a transmitter in a radio station and it sends the signal out, all right? So for years we were using a program called NiceCast, which was a good name for it because it was nice and it did a really good job and was very simple to use and it has a very small footprint on the desktop. I wish I could show it to you, it's beautiful. And, um, uh, you know, it was, it was terrific. Well, the company that did NiceCast sent out a thing last year and said, we're doing away with NiceCast. And I go, oh, my God, here's another company. Here, start using a program uh, called uh, Audio Hijack, it's called. And it, 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 let me tell you this. It, it, Audio Hijack is a great little program. We use it for our 24-7 channel. It's good. It really, really works well. However, NiceCast worked really well and was really simple and really good. Okay, and so all of a sudden, they're just they're out of a clear blue sky. We're stopping using NiceCast. You got to use Audio Hijack. So I started using Audio Hijack on that machine, but not on this machine. But I still have it installed on the on the server machine, even though I don't use it. So over here tonight, I get a thing that says, uh, you know, Audio Hijack has been, uh, rather, NiceCast has been discontinued and you should go over to this other thing we've got, which I already have installed, you know. Um, then I look at the other machine here and I, I have NiceCast on that machine just simply because it was there, all right? And it, it says, Mac OS 1.4 is unsupported. Migrate from NiceCast to Audio Hijack now. Now, all they had to do here's to make it work with the newest OS of Mac was to just redo the program as a 64-bit program. Now, I'm not a programmer, but I've been told by most programmers that's not a big brain trust to do that that any good uh, programmer knows how to take something and have it go from being 32-bit to 64-bit. But they just didn't want to. You know, I mean, their program should have been 64-bit all along because it, uh, it works better as a 64-bit program, and the Macs have been 64-bit for years. What does that mean, 64-bit, you say? I don't really know. But it, but all, all Mojave wants 64-bit, but it does say that a lot of the legacy stuff at 32-bit will still work. But now this company is like Skype. All your life, the whole thing's going to come to a close. It, it's going to crash and blah, 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 blah. blah. You, fuck you. I don't need that, you know? And they made a really fine little product, and their audio hijack is a fine little product. And it's not that I don't, I'm using it over there. I'm just not using it here because I just, I, it takes up too much real estate on the, uh, on the, on the uh, thing, to, on the screen. And plus, I'm not using Mojave on this machine because, here you go, Apple decided that if you had yourself a Mac as old as this one, you couldn't upgrade to Mojave, that there was a cutoff date because they didn't, they didn't they could create a version of Mojave so that it could be backward compatible to all the older machines, but they didn't. All the other programs they did had that, you know, and had, didn't have a problem. Um, all these years, every time they've been upgrading, they didn't have to have a cutoff date, but they just do that because they want you to go out and buy more newer Macs. And the fact is, they don't make a Mac as good as this old Mac, uh, Mac uh, 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 Pro that we call it in the old days. It's a, you know, it's just the, the, the uh, desktop Mac. Uh, so, uh, you know, I mean, it's all these companies that force you to go from something which was working just fine to something that's now a work in progress. Now, I had a problem. Did I have a problem with audio hijack? Yeah. I did. It it uh, crashed on me twice in just the last couple of weeks. And so I wrote them over there at the company 
And I said, you know, I like NiceCast, but your new program crashes. And they so now they had me send them all these little files of crash reports and things like that. And I'm just going. And they keep the today they wrote me again. Would you tell us one more thing about because we're trying to find out what made it crash? And I, I just wrote them and said, you know, NiceCast never in the I guess what? I've been using it ever since we were over at the TV station. NiceCast has never, ever crashed on me. So, you know, so it's all these people that are trying to get you to go to something else and they force you to do it rather than allow you, if you want to, to keep what you have. And there's no reason why Skype can't say, hey, look, we're not going to come up with new updates for 7.0. Oh, it seems pretty solid. We don't need to have too many fixes for it or anything like that. Keep using it if that's what you like. But we really think you should get used to 8.0 because it's really swell. And let me be the judge of that. Give me the choice. But I don't get that choice. And that, uh, that kind of bothers me. Let me see here. I don't, I don't see any, any numbers here. Uh, i got to re redo this here because it's, uh, it's not doing what it's got to do. Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, so, so anyway, uh, you get what I'm saying. Why, why do they always force us to use something else? Why is it there is this forced obsolescence? You know, uh, let me use what I'm going to use and leave me alone. I just, I just, I don't want any of that. You know. Anyway, uh, I notice I've been, uh, you know, I don't think I can talk for a half hour and uh, 25 minutes, and then I wind up talking for 25 minutes. Uh, the Skype lines are open. Phil's not going to call tonight, so that means that the coast is clear for a lot of the rest of you to get a word. Oh, wait a minute. This thing just came up from Skype saying, latest version of Sc Skype is ready to install now. I wish I could just write a note and send it back to them saying, leave me the fuck alone. Also, they should allow you to be able to turn off those notifications. They don't do that either. They want to just bug you and make your life a living hell and have this ugly thing here that's only going to be up here as long as nobody's calling that tells me that this version of Skype will be discontinued soon. To continue using Skype in the future, update to the latest version today. Wow. Well, let's see. Now you'll see how a picture comes up on there. See? Here comes Tom Yamaguchi, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. <clears throat> Do you have any problems this way in your life with the uh, companies well i would was going to say that uh i actually did use uh, audio hijack yeah many years ago when i uh, when you first were on uh, sirius and uh you had your live your uh, website are, are you, know, you sure screen. you were using audio hijack because i think yeah. it's a relatively new product from this company oh no no it's been around well, that was two well 2004 yeah, because I, cause I would have to go to work, and I didn't want to miss any of the show, so I would set it so to record it while, uh, when I went away, and then when I came back, I was able to listen to it. Are you sure it was Audio Hijack? I'm absolutely sure. Yes, it is. I, don't know. I might well, even have the, it on my computer the, still. But, uh, the company was, the show, company's so Rogue, Ami uh, uh, Rogue Amoeba is the name yeah, of Yeah, Rogue company. Amoeba. Really? The, uh, the logo, the, what, the slug with the machine gun? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, I, it, 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 it uh, 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 what do you call it? Uh, Audio Hijack is, uh, it, it, I don't know what the program was then, but what it is now, it's very nice. It's modular. You can, I can put, uh, put, put the feed and then I can say what the feed's going to be. And then I can put a, uh, I can even put a VU meter there so I can see when it's working or not working. And then, the, you know, but it, it does have a few problems that I don't like. Uh, but outside of that, it's a fine little program that I have no complaint with, right? It worked uh, for me when I was using it. Uh, of course, then Sirius changed their um, their uh, the way they the way they they put programs on the web, and it didn't work anymore. And now I I really don't even find any real need either because the way the the internet works now. You don't have to record anything. Everything is just, but you know, everything is just available on demand. Right. You don't have to. You don't have to record by this video thing that we do here every night yeah. because it's it's going to be on to uh, on uh, YouTube. You know. Yeah. 
By sure. the way, I, I didn't even add YouTube to the mix. YouTube, and we're on Facebook, and we're on Spotify, and we're on uh, GabNet.net. And what's that other one that we're on? <laughs> I can't even remember half of the ones we're on. What? Huh? Roku? Uh, Roku, yeah. yeah. Uh, are, are you tapping something? Is, oh, I'm is it, it, Yeah, yeah. There we Sorry go. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, um, uh, yeah, Roku. You can get us on Roku. Uh, you can uh, there. No, but there's one other that I can't even remember the name of the company. I'm trying to remember it now. Anyway, we're on a lot of shit. Yeah. You know. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, sad to say, we're not going to be on TuneIn anymore. I mean, we're not going to be a partner, TuneIn partner anymore. Yeah, you sort of scare me because that's generally how I listen. Oh, yeah. well, I'm not watching on YouTube. Yeah. I'm listening on yeah. well, uh, I, a phone with it with well, the. Oh, well, you'll the you'll still get us on TuneIn. It's not like they're taking us off. It's just the partnership agreement we had is being well, ended. But the partnership, I thought, had ended a while ago because they didn't do <laughs> jack shit for us. <laughs> I forgot all about it. You know, it was a piece of it was it was a a a what did they call it? Uh, it wasn't a it wasn't a, a contract. It was a tune in memorandum of understanding. <laughs> so fuck tune in. You know, I mean, you can hear us on tune in. It's the twenty four seven feed. You know mm -hmm. that you're getting on on tune in. Uh, but there's so many other ways to get us. So. You know, you can just go to the, instead of using TuneIn, just go to the uh, GabNet page and, um, uh, you know, uh, click on uh, the thing at the, at the top and it will start playing our programs. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing as TuneIn, basically. Yeah. Um, For me, it's just more convenient to, to, to use my phone. Yeah, well, you can, well, you can get, a, you know, you can get GabNet on the phone. Right. Yeah. Um, uh, and what it does, what happens is I had to do it in a certain way so that it brings up a separate player on your screen when you push that thing because I have a, I have, I bought a secure site. It's a, you know, it's, uh, right. uh, we're secure, <laughs> whatever that means. I don't know. I got sold it. It's stupid. Anyway, uh, half the, most of the things on, on the internet are not secure sites. All right. Um, but uh, anyway, it's a secure site. But the minute I if I had it play on the browser. Uh, immediately, I would lose that security setting. Mm -hmm. OK, so I had to make it so it did it outside of the browser. And uh, n now you're secure all the time. OK. Yeah. Speaking of uh, not secure, uh, I don't know if people are even interested in this. And by the way, folks, no Phil here tonight. You can get a word in edgewise. Come on, join us. Uh, I had a, We had a problem with our Canadian server that the only thing it really does is it serves several audio files for the Roku channels, okay? Uh, and uh, it, uh, but the main thing it does is we have a thing we make called an XML file. And to make this very simple, the XML file simply tells all these various things that we have where to go and listen to the program. It tells tune, it tells iTunes where to go. It tells uh, um, uh, 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 Roku where to go for the li live program or for any of those programs. It, it puts up all the pictures. And so all I'm saying is they're called XML files and we reference that file. That file says where a particular thing, like Spotify, uses our XML files too. And it tells them then where to go to get the program. Okay. Uh, I can put the program anywhere, but it goes there to get the program. Well, those have been there since the beginning. All of a sudden, the other night, I couldn't, I couldn't post to the, the, that server. So they, I posted to it. I, I called them, and, and I thought they, they were, they've been a lousy company the last couple of years, and I figured it'd take two weeks for them to solve the problem. And um, uh, I, what, was it too boring, Brian? Uh, <laughs> gee. 
and the tech talk. Uh, and, and, and no, so no, so but here's the thing, the maddening thing about it. So, uh, uh, within a day, they had it fixed. They were very good about it. Terrific new new ownership. Terrific, solve the problem. But now I'm looking at uh, online at the at the files, and there are files there that aren't mine. I mean. Literally, and I think I can say this somewhat without uh, equivocation, something like over a couple of thousand files that weren't mine. And they were obviously put on there by some hackers who were using my account to serve whatever they serve. Oh, my. So now I'm spending the whole day cherry picking the whole site to get rid of all these files. I got rid of all of them except one, and they just it just says there isn't that file isn't there. So, whatever. <laughs> I finally cleaned it all up, but it literally took me hours upon hours upon hours to do, and I'm still finding them. You know how, like you, uh, you I don't know, you, yeah. you, you 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 broke a glass and the glass splayed everywhere, and you got the vacuum cleaner and you cleaned it up, but every now and then you find one more piece of glass or shards. Yeah, yeah. when you're roofing. Yeah, so I find a new shard every now and then. You know, <laughs> that's in there. But uh, basically, I think I whoever's trying, and then I change my password on the site. So let's and see. And then they'll do it again well, two years later. Well, it, 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 what bothers me is that the company, and I'm not blaming the new ownership. I'll blame the old ownership that they, they didn't do anything to protect against this sort of thing to their computers. You know, for all I know, it's the Russians and it's the way they've been hacking the elections. You know, <laughs> I, they, I, so well, maybe, I think that I think they're probably satisfied with their, their server in Trump Tower. Yes. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, I uh, so I mean, uh, maybe I thwarted uh, their attempts at, at fixing the election next week. You know, I don't know. But I got rid of all I spent all day like cherry picking. Yeah, getting rid of them. yeah I heard the word hacker and, and uh, you know, a private app and, uh, you know, you're, you're the way you conduct business. And I'm just that's all the information I need to formulate my one question, which is this. Mm -hmm. If people like that, or if I should say despicable urchins like that, were incarcerated the way Trump wants to incarcerate illegal immigrants and whatnot, would mm -hmm. anyone on this panel thus far complain? I highly doubt it. I, I doubt it, too. Uh, that and uh, robocallers. That and if they were subjected to waterboarding. Yeah, yeah. Robocallers uh, uh, robo should be subjected to waterboarding. I think that that's... <laughs> I'd, cut them in the, I'd, cut them in, I'd cut them in the pieces and show it to themselves well, you as know, they were still it, alive. You know, and I'm sure, it, I'm sure I'd be a it, fucking hero it for it. It used to be when I got those calls, it was actually a human being, and I could just go, fuck you and the train you came in on, you know? Or, you know... And, yeah, uh, like, what, I used to love when a, when a, when a woman would call... Uh, uh, and or a guy, I I would say, uh, are you wearing any clothes right now? Because I'm not. And they said, what kind of pervert are you? I said, I'm not a pervert. You're the one who called me. Yeah, the yeah. kind of pervert doesn't call you preemptively. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yes, Tom. Uh, I've mentioned this before, but one of the nice new features I like on my iPhone is I'll get a call and on the display screen it says scam likely. And I get a whole bunch of them. Well, and do you just, do you have Haya? Is that the reason? I don't have the phone anyway. If I don't Next recognize. Next to Rob Alfano, Haya does that for me. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't answer it anyway if I don't recognize the, the the phone number, and it'll just let the the answering machine take it. I got I got another I got a newer thing than that. Uh, and, yeah. And I'm not going to sub I'm not going to recommend them yet because they fucked me over. All right. I'll explain this one too. It's called Robo Killer. And what it literally does is your phone doesn't ring. But it does give you a message saying RoboKiller intercepted a call from this number. So in case it is a number you wanted to accept, you could then uh, do, do something to undo it. Call right? them back? Yeah, call them back or whatever. But mm -hmm. basically it, the phone just doesn't ring. The only problem that happened was I signed up for it last night and the girlfriend was next to me and she was signing up for it too. And she said, I decided to go for the $29 plan. And I said, what $29 plan? The only plan I see here is either $9 a month, $9.99 a month, or a year 
for $97.99. And she says, well, that's not what mine said. And it said, it must have said it, and you must have accident. Today, she goes and gets her thing that came from Apple about the charge, and it's right, $29.99. And mine, I get a week free, and I went on to, I went on to Apple, and I said, cancel me, you know. Because for me, it was $99.99 or $97.99. So I get a hold of the company and I, mm -hmm. I do a chat with them, which took forever to get done. And uh, I, they said to me, oh, well, we were testing different price levels. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking to myself, well, you mean my wife, you told her, okay, $29.99, uh, but you mean you told $97.99? Yep. And they said, well, we'll correct that. And I said, well, I already canceled the thing. And they said, well, we'll correct it on your phone number, so if you ever sign up for it again, you will get that lower rate. And I'm going, what kind of company does that? We're testing different price models. So that, that means that somebody, Apple should know about this because they're the intermediary in all of this. They should I'll tell know. you what, it's a company that takes advantage of loose regulations. I guess. I mean, uh, it, I think they, I don't think there's anything legally wrong with them charging any number of prices to any number of people. Uh, uh, saying, Obviously well, we're, te we're testing the price model here or whatever. But it's grossly unfair. You know, it, it makes me not have confidence in them as a company. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Just like I have no very little confidence in the United States of America and how it's governed. Well, um, uh, uh, what, what makes you say that, Brian? <laughs> well, what would have made me say that? Um, well, actually, you know what? My critique of the, of the Democratic establishment is a rather recent one. Because I, I kind of, as much as I used to be, a, uh, I used to be once upon a time a Republican, early 2002 or 2003. I, I can imagine. Uh, I was can, one of the acolytes who fell in love with the, the uh, Iraq invasion because I thought we were going to liberate the. Plus, also, remember, I was uh, 19 going on 20 come, okay? Yeah. Young, dumb, full of come, bullshit. And uh, then I uh, kind of fawned over the early years and the mid level years of the Obama administration. But, uh, you know, people like Jimmy Dore and Chris Hedges are right. Uh, this administration puts an ugly face on ugly policies that were masked over for the last, well, as long as I've been alive. And I was just too dense and too um, ignorant to realize that. So in answer to your question, that's what makes me say that well, I've lost Well, actually, I believe, you, I believe you were a Republican because you look like you could be a Republican. Yeah. Yeah. You know. You look good with a MAGA hat on, you know. <laughs> Please don't say that. Don't ever say that to me ever, uh, ever uh, again. Uh, okay, I promise. I promise. I've oh, been a Republican. God. What? I've been a Republican. Really? In a few primaries. Oh, in other words, you found that the, the Republican yeah, appealed to you. I voted the presidential primary and... Uh, and uh, you know, especially if the Democrats weren't having a, a contested primary, I'd just go vote then and, and select a Republican that I felt was the least offensive. Well, you know, um, I'd write in. There was a time when I can honestly say that, you know, I could have conceivably uh, gone for a Republican. I mean, Rockefeller was a very liberal Republican, as an example, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. In fact, Rockefeller, if he were around today would probably be a Democrat. Sure. Uh, and uh, you know, huh? uh, Charles Percy. Yeah. Yeah. People like that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, what Thomas, about a libertarian? Thomas Keyhole here in, in California. Yeah. Probably one of the last great uh, Republican uh, U.S. senators. And, and that's what I don't like about what's going on today is that somehow if you're going to be a Republican, you have to believe thus and thus. And you can't yeah. you can't veer over to the left you at have all. Have that with the Democratic establishment, though, too. Well, well I I agree lessons. with you. I agree with you. The Democrats you not are the only, same way. I like to compare it metaphorically speaking to a family reunion. You not only that you're throwing that you're that you're initiating. Uh, you not only have to invite 
you're cool. And I'm using people on this panel as an example in a joking fashion. You not only have to invite your cool ass Aunt Renee, for example, or Aunt Charlene, but you also have to invite your dirty Uncle Phil, too. Yeah. yeah. Why do you call him Uncle Phil? Is there a reason for that? Oh. Well, I was saying I was using uh, people on this panel, uh, uh, panel in a joking fashion to facilitate my I see. family reunion uh, analogy. Uh, oh, OK. All right. When you have to subscribe to a political party, whether it be yeah. Republican or Democrat. Right. Especially right. with the rise of neoliberalism, as ugly as it has been. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, you know, I just think no. that there, there was a time when I, when there was the distinct possibility that I could have voted for a, uh, uh, a Republican. I'm, in fact, there was a time when I said I, I re rejected, the, resented the fact that I didn't vote for uh, Goldwater. You know, because gold, very cold water, huh? gold. I can well, see why you say that. Well, Goldwater turned out to be a very. He may have been a conservative, but he was a reasonable conservative. And he on, certainly did. And on top of that, wait a minute. On top of that, um, in in retrospect, he was totally honest. You know, he wasn't lying to win elections, and I he, liked that about him. He certainly did a 180, and I mean a real 180, about face on uh, uh, homosexuals and homosexuality in the United States. Oh, really? Did he? I didn't oh, know yeah. that. Yeah, this after he sustained two nervous breakdowns and had, uh, you know, he just had his own, if I weren't an atheist, I'd say, and I'm going to say it anyway, come to Jesus moment. <laughs> I, 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 I'll tell you the one thing about him that was terrific that I remember the most was I saw an interview with him after he lost the election. And they were, uh, they were interviewing him on the front porch of his home in Arizona. And I think it was even nighttime. And he was sitting there and they said, well, what do you do now? Uh, and he said, sometimes we come out here at night, just sit on the porch and rock back and forth and hum hail to the chief. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I uh, after I saw that I went. Well, I should have voted for him. You know, I should have voted for him. Uh, yeah, look how wonderful Lyndon Johnson turned out to be. Well, I mean, yeah, he gave us the voting, but you know, the the, the stuff, the, the positive stuff that he did. People, I've heard the people argue that it was uh, Kennedy's plan to begin with. Well, no, 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 absolutely, and he he really he, he admitted to that. They were they were they were Kennedy's proposals. But Kennedy could have never gotten them through. He wasn't the politician that LBJ was. Well, and, he was a mess. And when he died, LBJ, to his credit, said, I'm going to finish the Kennedy legacy. I'm going to do all the things he wanted to get done. But he got them done because he knew how to get them done. He knew how to play Unlike down. Unlike Obama, and, he knew how to. He knew how to play down and dirty politics. Well, in all fairness, there was the, the 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 political environment was a lot different then. One thing, you know, I mean, Democrats were in control, and uh, and they and they and he was able to get them through. But 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 he did need Republican support. He did uh, have Everett Dirksen, who really helped out a lot. Um, I, th I think it's unfair to uh, compare to uh, Obama because, because as I said, the, the, the environment was, was totally different. Uh, the two parties were more willing to work together. At yeah, that I, I agree with you. I think, I think but, but the problem is, is that a Lyndon Johnson, for instance, wouldn't have put up with a lot of crap that Obama put up with because he didn't know how to handle it, you know. I don't think so. I, I, I don't think so. I, I, you know, one thing... And I think I mentioned this before one time I was on the program. A few years ago when they had the 50th anniversary of the, um, of the signing of the Civil Rights Law, uh, and radio had some recordings of, of, of the telephone conversations uh, uh, Johnson made with, with different senators. And he also had some, uh, some you know, historians talking about it. And, and they said one thing to Johnson's credit was he knew – when to back off he knew the senate well enough that if he pushed himself too much he could destroy the deal mm -hmm. so so you know this this you know through the years when you were on seriously oh that lived johnson he was uh, you know kicking ass and taking names it's just a, you know it's just a total fabrication of what was really going on he, he was he was really um 
more, uh, you know, he he's more, more sophisticated than, than you're giving him credit for. Well, I don't know how sophisticated he was. He was a great domestic president, lousy foreign president, uh, mm-hmm. because, uh, you know, where Kennedy was the opposite. Uh, Kennedy was a very good, uh, for, he had a good grasp of foreign politics and the, because he'd, he'd seen the world, you yeah. know. Uh, 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 Lyndon Johnson was more of a hometown guy. And he knew he knew American problems, and he knew how to uh, deal with American problems. But when it came to a thing like the Vietnam War, he was at a total loss, total loss. You know. Yeah. Well, we don't know how, how you know what Kennedy would have done. I mean, because he was a cold warrior. I mean, Kennedy could have been dragged into the into the Vietnam well, War. Well, uh, no. Let Let's be honest about it. It's Kennedy, in fact, who who started the roots of the Vietnam War. He sent the first. So I'm sorry, it was Eisenhower. He sent, Eisenhower actually, that goes back. To well, Eisenhower. he sent he sent fifteen thousand troops in as military advisors, mm-hmm. uh, uh, which I don't think Eisenhower did. Eisenhower was simply giving uh, uh, respect to the Saigon regime and whatever. Yes. You know, I mean, yeah. th- that, uh, w- uh, oh, I thought we were losing Brian there. We can't afford no, to lose you, Brian. Just, so- we only got two people here. What is this? Is anybody out there? Can you hear us out there? I saw Vernon on the chat. So huh? I saw Vernon not on the chat. It would be nice if he Well, Vernon's talk. got a problem because he's on vacation, and he called last night and had a very yeah. bad signal. Yeah. So uh, 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 we I do. Mean, he tried using Skype, though, and tried cutting the video out of his Skype feed, and it still was. Yeah. Fuck. Um, yeah, so yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. try calling in if he's listening. Just try calling in uh, uh, using your cell phone the way Tim does. Some, and he's on. He's been on uh, on GabNet Live. He just posted like five, ten minutes ago. Who's now. Who's there? Who? Uh, Tim Tim Albright. Oh, Tim Albright. Yeah. Well, Tim, you can call. You know, we'd love to hear from I wish you. you. Would as a matter of fact. You don't have both, to. You don't have both. to put up with uh, with uh, the uh, bloviating of uh, Phil. You know. Um, Oh, I think it's fun when those two argue, Tim and Phil. <laughs> you got somebody who knows the ins and outs of like Social Security and you know the nuts and bolts of how uh, these bureaucratic policies work, and you got some blow, like as you said, bloviating outsider who yeah. thinks he knows about shit, but yeah. well, don't you know, know anything. I'll tell you, I've known Phil. I'll admit, I, I don't I've, know much I've, about I've him. I've known either. Phil since my time in San Francisco. Uh, in fact, I think I knew him in New York for a short time. Uh, so it's been years and years and years that we've known each other on some level. He just reappeared in my life a few years ago when this thing started happening. But uh, he nevertheless, uh, it, it, he, go, we go, he goes back a long way. And I don't, uh-huh. I don't think he's a stupid guy, okay? Yeah. And yet no, I, 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 I just don't understand. I think he understand. plays the camera a lot. Well, I, who knows how much he plays the camera and doesn't. I don't ever, when I talk to him, discuss that okay because i don't want to know i want to just know what he wants to present on the show okay but i find that anybody who somehow can put up with what obama's bullshit has got to be stupid i mean you've got to be an an absolute fucking moron to buy that bullshit you mean trump's trump's bullshit yeah Yeah. he said obama (laughs) oh excuse me excuse me trump's bullshit I mean, who who buys that? You know, uh, um, you know. I do realize uh, maybe America is stupider than we give it credit for. I think you're right. America is a lot dumber than we give it credit for. Yeah, and that it, we're certainly seeing these people come out of the woodwork, and we have been even before 2016. Well, you know these these guys have always been around. And they've always found a, a, an audience for their opinions and how they feel about things. You know, I mean, this is nothing new. It's just that he, he, he nobody's ever become president who's so just horrible, you know? Uh, if anything, Trump is kind of the manifestation or has capitalized a lot on the uh, AM talk radio uh, uh, talking points and has become the physical manifestation of them. Well, for he, his own gain, of yeah. course, so that he could enrich himself and members of his family, if you believe that he even gives a shit about members of his family, well, which some don't even give him that much credit. The most recent thing, the most recent uh, 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 version of this whole thing 
is his whole his whole last minute approach to this election, which is to go after the immigration thing, and the way in which he's going after it, in what is to anybody who has is is smart and sharp and knows about things, just stupid ideas being thrown out. You don't have to be. You don't even have to be. You don't have to be super smart. All you have to have is a bullshit detector that works. Well, yeah, but these people don't have bullshit detectors. They don't know where to buy them because Sears closed down. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I have say, you know, I, I've been thinking about this for a while. Uh, uh, one of my favorite okay. classic books is James Thurber's uh, Tales, Fables for Our Time. Yeah. Uh, Keith Olbermann used to read from that. And, and I think. I think one of the fables perfectly describes Trump and, and his, his followers. And it's called The Owl Who Is God. And basically, I guess you haven't read the story. No. But basically, they find this, this owl, and they ask him these different questions, and it's all variations of the answers are who, who, or whatever, or who it, and and. And, and somehow they figure that, that the owl is answering their questions, and then they're convinced that the owl is God, and they're going to, they're, they're going to follow this owl everywhere it goes. It, so it starts walking down the middle of this highway, and a truck, oncoming truck is, is coming towards them. and says, what do we do? And the owl says, to wit. And they kept watching, and the truck runs them all over. So... <laughs> If you get a chance, it's it's a very funny story. That whole yeah. book is just wonderful. Yeah. But uh, James Thurber, the owl who was well, God. Thurber was wonderful. Uh, he was blind, and he it was, still was a cartoonist. Uh, that's what was interesting about him. Yeah. Uh, 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 I, uh, um, you know, I just don't understand. I mean, like for instance, he's going to send fifteen thousand troops to the border now. To begin with, I heard him say today, there are 20,000 people marching to the United States. And the last thing I heard, they were down to a handful. They were down to a couple of thousand. Isn't that what you heard? I thought they weren't marching. I thought they were traveling via caravan. Well, yeah. Caravan. And also, yeah, this is the ABC interview where he also boasts that he's a good, he, he's, he's, he's great at estimating crowds. <laughs> really? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and the guy who mailed those pipe bombs is a stable oh, genius. Give me a fucking break. Hey, we've been joined by, uh, by uh, let me see here. We've been joined by, uh, wait a minute. Are you on the phone, Vernon? Yes. Oh, okay. I don't know why your picture came up here. So let me get rid of that. Oh, I see. Okay, mobile. Okay, that's what we want. Okay, well, I don't know what, what the story is here. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. I got to uh, get this all together. Wait a minute. There we go. Uh, hi, Vernon. How are you this evening? I'm just fine. Yeah. Uh, so we've been talking about what kind of moron, you know, uh, is a Trump supporter. and uh, Special grade of one. Yeah. And, and, but, but the thing I'm is... I'm not going to say oh, they're morons. I mean, I, I, I'm very reluctant to call people stupid. But, but people really can act very irrationally and out of emotion. Yeah. And that's what that's what Trump is really appeals to. He appeals to their emotions, especially fear, mm -hmm. and uh, it, and that's why it is a cult. I mean, he's, he just really no, he didn't, look. He he doesn't know the meaning of the word fear. In fact, he believes we should fight fear with fear. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, the joke. Yeah, is Mr. Bone Spurs says this. At least Adolf Hitler served honorably in the uh, German army in World War One. <laughs> yeah, As, I'm sure. I, I, well, Mussolini, he had his own troubles. So he was back in the days in his youth when he was a socialist and he was facing, uh, you know, oppression from all sides as well until he became an asshole as well. But Trump, he's just, he was he was a lackluster, lazy, lethargic douchebag uh, before. And he's even more so now. Yeah, but here's here's the point. Uh, I, you know, you're very nice, Tom, because I, you're a sweet person and you have a sweet nature about you. But I do think they're morons. Okay, and and I think you got to be pretty dumb to buy that bullshit. Would you agree with me, Vernon? Well, I work with several people at Home Depot. 
who voted for Trump. Oh, God. <laughs> My condolences. And, and yeah. they're, they're, oh, they're generally nice people. Yeah. And I think what, what Trump tapped into, at least That's with these people, was the frustration that uh, voters had with the way government was working, and they thought, well, we, you know, we've tried it with all these other politicians. Let's give this guy a try. Now, I think that was a big mistake. So, mm -hmm. well, you don't, you know, you don't find, you don't hire somebody who doesn't know plumbing to be your plumber. Uh, I mean, you hire professionals. That's why people are in politics, and why, uh, if they do a good job of representing us, they bring the pork home to your local area and they do their job you know uh but the thing is that for instance here's here's an example he's moving what fifteen thousand troops he's going to send down to the border when and and supposedly these uh these these hordes of people which i now hear are only down, down in the thousands not he said twenty thousand it wasn't even twenty thousand when it started out okay and it, it did grow, but it never got, uh, that got that big. And then it's gotten smaller as they've marched through Mexico, and some people have offered them work and so on and so forth, right? So he says he's going to put 15,000 troops down there. I guess they're going to have to get down there before these people arrive, which is going to be about the first of the year. So that means that all these soldiers, all these troops that are going to be moved to the border are not going to be able to spend Christmas with their families. Yeah. Yeah. And they're going to cost us a lot of money, probably even more money than, than his silly little march was going to be, was going to be uh, costing. Oh, oh, this is going to cost more than maybe the wall. <laughs> you know, I mean... Yeah. I yeah, mean, it's sure the wall would be a bark at it. Maybe that's his plan. <laughs> but, <laughs> bait and switch. <laughs> you've got to be a total moron. That's all this is bait and switch, Tom. That's all of, all, all it is, bait and switch. It, it, but you've got to be a total moron to believe that this is the answer. You know, that, oh, I'm with our president. He's sending 15,000 troops to the border. Well, uh, where on the border exactly? You know, we should that, start calling this Trump's Jade Helm 15. Trump's what? Jade Hel Jade Helm 15. Jade Remember Hel all the crap that Obama got from the military exercises down in Texas in 2015? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I remember. Yeah. yeah. The operation called Jade Helms. And Alex Jones, you mean those conspiracy theories running that uh, Alex Jones were, were perpetuating about those Walmarts being used for detention centers oh, for American by the way, By the way, yeah. speaking yeah. of Alex Jones... Uh, I was, you know, I was just looking at, uh, I think it was something like, I don't know, a tune in or something online. No, it was another app, uh, a radio app uh, to listen to radio stations and podcasts. And so I was looking for Alex Bennett because I want to see if we were there. It turned out we were there under GabNet, but I looked for Alex Bennett and I wasn't there. But the first thing that popped up was Alex Jones. So I figured, ah, fuck it, I'll listen to him. I, I never really listened to Alex, Alex Jones. I've just heard what he had to say in clips. And I turn him on, and he's immediately talking about homosexual frogs and that the water has turned these frogs homosexual. And that, you know, they're supposed to ju uh, jump on the eggs and then drop their sperm all over them, but now they're jumping on other male frogs and dropping their sperm all over them. That sounds uh, legit. And that sounds he's, legit. He's going on this rant, and I'm going, it's like I wanted to tune into the let's do an impression of Alex Jones channel, and there was some <laughs> guy on the air doing that. But no, this was really Alex Jones. I lasted about a minute and a half with that bullshit, but nevertheless, that's what he was talking about, homosexual frogs. But Alex, that's an alternative legitimate source for news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck you. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, the problem is... For those of you who can't see me, I'm being sarcastic. You know, when we only had three television networks, you could, you could argue that, well, there wasn't enough news outlets for people to get the proper stories. But it was sure better in those days because the networks vetted everything that came out of their news departments to make sure that they were as close to true as possible. But now that you have this Internet where anybody can have a channel like Alex Jones and then be doing his own news. And if you ever looked at his channel, 
He's got a beautiful set there, TV, you know, uh, uh, set with big screens in back of him and all of that. And, you know, um, and they look at that and they don't know the difference between that and ABC World News Tonight. And that's the problem, is that now anybody, including me, can do this and have a voice. And because it, it comes out in somewhat the same form as all this other stuff, you just say, well, I heard it. It's got to be true. Yeah. Well, no, you heard it, and it could be completely false, and you should know that. Did you ever look up the uh, 2016 Republican convention and how uh, Alex I, Jones and, uh, the, ah. and his team bombed uh, uh, Cenk Uger and the Young Turks? It's actually entertaining. Whatever you think of Oh, I hate, I hate it's fucking still, Cenk, Cenk, Uger is a pe- Cenk Uger is a piece of fucking shit, okay, Brian? Don't even mention him in my presence. <laughs> okay. T-Y-T, he is then. a disgusting, so- vile human being. And I'm telling you that from personal experience. I had to do a show with him one night. Election night coverage, as a matter of Historical fact. Historical records with indicate him. that John Wait, Lennon was a disgusting and vile human being, uh, but he was a talented I, musician. I knew John, and he wasn't a disgusting and vile human he being. He was a wife beater. He was? I didn't know yeah, that. John Lennon beat his first wife before Yoko Ono. Well, I, I never heard I, 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 it. It's, the first, it's the first time I've heard it. So but, first what I'm saying, but my underlying point is, in spite of that, my point yes, is that Jenk Uger is a. I, I all I could say to myself as I was doing the show with him was, how the fuck do I get out of this? You know, I the, the company brought me in to do a show that night, which was going to be election night coverage, and I did it with Jenk, and he had a partner at the time, uh, and I, yeah. can't, I can't remember who it was now, and and his name Gordon or something. I can't yeah, and and he just completely monopolized the conversation and didn't give any give and take and just thought he was the most perfect, wonderful thing in the world. And I just said, this Pete guy is an absolute piece of shit. Yes, Tom. And Tom is the nice guy now. He'll take over and say how nice people are. Go ahead. No, I was just actually I was going to take it back to the where you're talking about complaints about the media and say, oh, this is something, you know, the horrible thing about the Internet. Well, what about uh, yellow journalism and remember the main? <laughs> you know? Well, no, I, I mean, it, it's the old uh, Hearst line about the reporter who went to South America and said there's no war here. He said, you just go down there and report it. I'll supply the war. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's essentially what he did. He created, uh, Hearst, the Spanish-American War, if I'm not mistaken. It was, was yeah. the Spanish-American so, so War. My, yeah. my point is, I mean, you know, we, you know we, we have to realize that, that there's always been issues or problems with the media. I mean, you know, it, it, when, it's, when it's a matter of commercialism and, and search for advertisers and viewers, they're always going to try to go appeal to the lowest common denominator. Yeah. But um, it, but uh, you know I have to say that it was uh, it was amazing um, uh, the, the people who will listen to an Alex Jones and believe it because the surroundings look like a TV show, so mm-hmm. it's got to be legitimate to them. They're not that sophisticated to be able to tell the difference, and I think that's the problem. Yeah, we need to we need to to find a a, a better way of teaching media literacy. Yes, that's, that, that's a you. very. We, we, need, we, we, we really need. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Charlene, uh, call us back, okay? Okay. As the saying call goes, it's easier said than done, Tom. Oh, wait a minute. Well, it sounds very daunting to me. It uh, is, you yeah, know, but it's a challenge, but we, you know, we got to do it. Yeah, we built the Hoover Dam and put a man on the moon, allegedly. Well, so. well, you're saying, you're saying, you use a very good term, media literacy. Uh, yeah. We don't have any media literacy. We, you know, uh, we there was a. Uh, um, um, we barely have financial. It, it was literacy. Damien who did a show the other night, where he was talking about the War of the Worlds broadcast. No, I'm sorry, Charlene. Charlene, I can't take you because you're calling on another line. Um, let me see here. Hold on a second. Let me call her. Okay. Oh. Let me see if I can add her to the mix. Um, no. Oh boy, here. Hold on a second. Can you only take one phone line? Me too. No, no. Uh, 
if I do that, maybe I can bring her in. Are, are you there, Charlene? Charlene? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, but you're calling on a, on a line you shouldn't be calling on. Oh, really? I don't know how that happened. Because you weren't calling, you weren't making a fresh call. You were calling on. Oh, a, like I'm like doing an old call? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll try it again. Bye bye. Okay. <laughs> Let me go back to our our panel. Oh, um, <laughs> uh, lovely day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 She, uh, she was calling on a, uh, on a, uh, if you, if you, if you're a, a caller, you have to make a fresh call every time. You can't go to one of our former, uh, yeah, you've got to go right into contacts. Yeah. You got to go into That's contacts. How I, and I just go to the contacts. And, and right. You there. can't go to the, uh, the, you can't uh, go through a previous call. Previous well, there's call. a previous panel. For instance, she might still right. have there, and that's what she was using to dial it. You can't do that. So, anyway, just find your GabNet uh, live uh, contact and use that to call with uh, Charlene. Uh, yeah, when we talk about it, you, you media literacy, I think is a, is a good term for it. But you know, maybe maybe it's that I, you know, I've spent my entire life in media, so I'm very aware of it. You know. And, and, I'm, and so I, I guess I have media literacy and I can tell the, the real from the fake, you know. Um, well, I've learned a lot of media literacy from listening to you. <laughs> uh, I guess I would hope I, that would be nice if some people did. But I learned a lot about what. Oh, the, oh I know what I was about. saying. Yeah. What I was going to say was uh, Damien was talking about the War of the Worlds broadcast and how could people have have. Uh, have, have been suckered by this thing because even at the beginning they say the CBS Broadcasting Network presents War of the World by Orson Welles and then they, he announces the beginning of it and then they go into the, you know, the whole thing. And then that only goes for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes, and then the second half of it is a narration along with uh, him being in hiding or something like that. So he said, I just don't understand how people get fooled by that. Well, there were two reasons why. To begin with, radio was a new medium, okay? Uh, and uh, some people tuned in late, and they believed this because that was the only way they heard radio in the past. So their lack of sophistication in what you call media literacy because radio was new is what caused the War of the Worlds broadcast to panic people. You could do that same thing today and not panic anybody. Right. Okay. But back then it was very easy to because people turned on this radio and they, you know, they didn't, uh, they just turned it on. I guess they had the station on before. And once the tubes warmed up, there was this program that they were catching in the middle and they're going, Oh, Grover's mill. What they're attacking, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's what we, when you talk about media literacy, that was a time when we had no media literacy at all. Charlene, you're doing it again. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. I just hung up on her. I don't know what she's doing uh, or how she's doing it, but she's uh, she's not calling. You're not calling uh, our number, Charlene. Can you add her to this group call? Uh, well, I, I tried to. Um... If she calls again, I'll see what I can do. I it's 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 difficult to do. It really is. Um, it sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. There, I have two things on Charlene. Wait a Didn't minute. Can you just call her back, me, Alex? Well, hold on a second. Let me try calling her back. Um, is eight is eight point fuck gonna make it worse? No. Let me see here. Are you guys there? Yeah. yeah, they're still there. Well, I'm calling her, and she's not picking up. Okay, well, I tried. Oh, well. well, what I'm hearing is the audio cutting out in and out and in and out every time you try to take a call for some reason. I don't know if it's her doing it or what the fuck. That's what here too. Yeah, but you're fine now, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we're fine now. Okay. Uh, I don't. I don't think it's Skype fucking with us. I think she's doing something wrong out there. Uh, so, anyway, uh, so uh, we could use some more callers, folks. You know, uh, but Vernon, what you, there were some things you wanted to take up, pick up on from last night uh, with uh, about 
you know, we were talking about elections and the electoral college versus the, the uh, uh, what do you call it, the uh, popular vote. And, and you had a couple of points that you said you wanted to make that somehow you couldn't get across last night. So since you have a good phone line right now, have at it. Yeah, thanks to Sprint. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> anyway, uh, the point that kind of got lost was that the NPVIC, which is the National Popular Vote Interstate uh, Compact, is essentially a, an agreement between the various states. The Constitution allows every state to decide how they're going to select the people that they send to the Electoral College to vote for president. Every state can do this any way they so please. Now, it just turns out that most states do it the same way, except for Maine and Nebraska. Maine and Nebraska will actually apportion, based on the popular vote, how many of their electors go for this guy and how many go to that guy. Mm -hmm. Every other state, it's winner take all. Mm -hmm. But the NPBIC basically says, and there's 11 states plus the District of Columbia that have signed this since it started in 2006. Basically, it doesn't go into force until there are enough states who have passed it to get 270 electoral votes locked down. Yeah. Once you've got that, then the Electoral College becomes a popular vote election just like it should be. Now, how does that work, though? How that works is if the state passes this law, mm -hmm. they are bound legally and constitutionally, mm -hmm. not constitutionally, but legally they're bound by the law that they pass to wait until the popular vote is decided nationally in all 50 states in the District of Columbia, and then whoever wins that popular vote will get all of their electoral um, voters to, to the Electoral College. Uh, so it would have to be whoever is winning the popular vote would get all the electors? Yes. Right now there's 172 out of 270 that are So in other words, down. they would now, pledge... You can imagine, most of the states that have already done it yeah. are... New York, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Rhode Island, California, Washington so, wait State. A minute, so let me get this straight. What happens is they would wait till the votes came in from all the other states, and find right. out who won the popular vote, and then they would pledge their electors towards that person who won the popular vote? Once you get to that threshold of 270, yes. Yeah. But until then, they do it the way they're doing it now. Mm-hmm. Still and saying, I mentioned this months ago, too. <laughs> I brought this up months ago. Yeah, but I don't, I, I don't exactly, have, I can't wrap my brain around it exactly. It, 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 what happens is, okay, it's election night, now here comes the election. All right? And uh, Hillary Clinton wins by three million votes. Now, what happens to these states now? Well, in the states that have already passed this compact, yeah, it wouldn't make any difference. But let's say Florida, which is a toss-up state, it has 29 electoral votes. Let's say Florida passes the compact. Okay. Yeah. If Florida had passed the compact, and if Pennsylvania had passed the compact, which there's pending legislation in both of those states, if they had passed it in 2016, Donald Trump would not be president. Why? Because Pennsylvania and Florida would have cast all of their votes. For Hillary Clinton instead of Donald Trump, well, even see. though he won the state, he won those states. The, the won those states, but she, votes. but they, but but he did not win the popular vote overall yes. over all fifty states. Right. So my a question here is, isn't this just a simple, uh, a rather uh, complex way <laughs> of getting rid of the electoral college that essentially? You're, you're allowing the Electoral College to exist, but you're basically doing away with the concept of it. So why not just do away with it altogether? Well, the problem is it takes a constitutional amendment. Uh, to I get see. Rid of okay. All, all right. That the, makes sense. The, uh, the general principle, you have to embrace the baby steps before you right. can move on to the bigger shit. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, but that's, I'll take it. I don't uh, give oh, a I'll fuck. I'll like take I said, it. I was using the counties as, as just a loose example, but uh, you know, whatever it takes. Uh, um, to uh, Charlene Martinez says to Gabinet Live, I would have been very quiet. 
What does that mean? <laughs> First, you got to be able to get in, Charlene. Um, um, to get that, I know I'm calling late. It's okay. Whether she's sending me one message after another, Jesus, look at this. Getting as bad as Tony. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> this is all my Facebook stuff. If I go over to Facebook, I'll, I'll see them. Well, I guess not. What's she using? What is she calling using? Is she no, she's using Facebook Messenger anyway. Uh, but anyway, uh, I don't know what your problem is, Charlene. You've called the show hundreds of times you must have you must know how to call it by now plus i have two different numbers on you here that seem to be in play maybe try restarting your computer and then uh after it restarts and well, resets itself I don't call think, back and again using skype see what happens well, i could try this hold on a second uh um this is a number where she is at okay now I don't I don't know how to add you to the uh, to the crowd here, uh, Charlene. Uh, let me see here. Uh, uh, no, no, I can't I can't do this, Charlene. You're gonna have to either try calling me again or whatever. Anyway, uh, it's uh, it's it's ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. Unless create a new group. No, I don't want to do that. Well, I can't do it. It's too much trouble. Uh, you know, I, I just don't know why she's having a problem since she hasn't had a problem before. You know, could it be the new Skype? No, because you guys called, you know, and and uh, 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 our, uh, our 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 friend Vernon Nunn has called, so you know we're okay. Uh, uh, it, it's just that I I just feel that. Uh, the the reason for the uh, electoral college had nothing to do with equalizing things out for the state. It was a convenience because it took so long for these electors to get to Washington. That's why we the electoral college is in January. You know why? Well, is a lot it of what we have now stems from the horse and buggy days. Exactly. I mean, Jack even told me that the reason why counties existed to begin with. Uh, talking about counties now, uh, is that uh, it would take in the horse and buggy days, especially in Texas, a day to get to the county center, to the center, the county capital on horse and buggy. From uh, it, it was designed so that it would take no longer than a day, than a day to get to the county capital from wherever in that particular county you were stationed in. Yeah, that was Charlene, by the way, trying to call in again. So, <laughs> you know, I have no idea. It's probably how to... the same. Probably the same logic applies to uh, you know counties in Pennsylvania because yeah. it itself is a big state and other states of the union. Well, all well. I'm saying is the reason was is that it took a while to get people say from uh, the outlying areas to Washington uh, to to vote on it and to get you know you couldn't like call and say okay so she so and so won in our state tonight you know. Speaking of contemporary laws that exist now because of horse and buggy times, yeah. that's why we have a three-month-long summer vacation it, oh, period for most students across the country. So, but that's the reason why, why, why they compacted all those votes into a handful of votes and said this is a representation of how our state voted. However, it's not truly a representation because usually it's winner-take-all. It, it, there are some states, aren't there, where you have a split electoral college. Uh, right now, there's only two, and that's Nebraska and Maine. Yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah, yes, what were you going to say, Tom? Yeah, but it's still a form of gerrymandering. And there are, I mean, I have been reading uh, that actually from the very beginning of, of the country, the smaller states with lower population were worried about getting, um, you know, getting uh, overrun or, or being overruled by the larger population states and we're trying to assert some kind yeah. of equilibrium in that sense. That and is a valid reason. People say that a lot of it was the motivation of the slave states yeah. and that the electoral college is sort of like a uh, uh, one of the lingering uh, things that we've got from our days when we were debating slavery. Yeah. So. Which is why I wonder if we'd allow the Confederate States of America to be the Confederate States of America, would we really be worse off in 2018? 
uh, there is some argument that people have had about if they didn't want to be here, let them go. You know, they're not the states (laughs) we like. Jack's one of them. Yeah, I mean, uh, we be unlike us. His skin tone is of a darker hue than most of ours. Yeah, but I mean, he he agrees with that logic that they should have just been. You know, if they when they seceded from the union, rather than saying, "Oh no, you can't," then going to war, we should have just said, "Good riddance." You know. In retrospect, I wonder if uh, we should have. Well, but then, but what would happen with the question of slavery? Would we still have slavery in the South? Well, or would we still, well, maybe, maybe not, probably not on account of how industrialization and mechanization of uh, agrarian tools like your tractors and your and, and your and your bulldozers and your blue mm-hmm. and so on and so forth would have uh, made that obsolete. A and B, I wonder with the you know the free trade fervor of the Clintons and the you know outsource it to China and other foreign markets that started under Reagan and maybe even a little before, if uh, if you know cities like Pittsburgh would have not have been as in deindustrialized as they are now if they had to compete against a country, the South, mm-hmm. that has traditionally been our adversary. If yeah. we'd have just been more protectionist in terms of our ec- economies, the South too yeah. being protectionist as well, mind you, and that we wouldn't have been so uh, willy nilly on our willingness to, uh, you know, outsource shit. Yeah. Uh, by the Read way, Harry Turtle does yeah. Southern Victory series but, and see if you don't come to that conclusion, as I have, yeah. about okay, the let, economies being more protectionist. Let me uh, let me let me put out a word. Would at least one more person call this program using Skype, please, so I can make sure that it's just Charlene and not uh, this new Skype system, okay? It would be a great help to us if one more person called tonight. I know uh, this is a smaller than usual group, uh, but uh, oddly enough, we have a lot of viewers out there tonight. It's a very high viewing audience. So uh, uh, go smaller. Speak. Smaller participants, but bigger discussions. We're allowed to take ter- bigger turns in terms of uh, voicing our opinions and our minds. Whereas, if it's eleven people on the panel, everybody well, has to raise their hand like they're in grade school and all that. So there's it, so there's 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 pros and cons to both. yeah, exactly. So well, just, would one more person call just so I can make sure we, and then you can go if you want to. I just <laughs> want to make sure that we can. Thank you. you know, no, no, yeah, no I'm, I'm not yeah, talking about like you guys. Confederacy, leave, and we'll say good riddance to you. We'll, 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 <laughs> we'll hold you back. Yeah. <laughs> Let me try it, Alex, and I'll call back on the phone. No, 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 work. no, no. Um, okay, give it a try and Skype, uh, Vernon. Let's see what happens. Okay. Uh, well, well, I should have said wait until we see if somebody else calls, but um, <laughs> um, you know, I just. I, I, I'm just so distraught right now uh, with uh, what's going on, you know. Um, it, it's funny. There's this guy. His, his name is uh, Chuck Bloor, and he Lori rather, Chuck and he Lori, run, yeah. runs a, a whole bunch of shows on CBS. He's a, a top yeah. comedy producer. Big Bang Theory is his mom, Young Sheldon. Uh, Two and a Half Men was his. And he runs these things called vanity cards at the end of the show. Here, oh, what do you know? Uh oh, there is a problem. Oh, bye. Burn it. Let me see here. Okay, let me try calling Vernon back, and let's see if we can add him. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, I just don't know what the problem is here. I think we've got a problem, folks. I oh, think we've got a problem. Uh, the audio cuts in and out again. I'm just trying to remember how I used to do it. Um, oh, God. I don't know. You need a fucking scorecard to keep score of this shit yeah. in terms of how you did it before. And <laughs> yeah. it. I'm, I, technology, I, wonderful. I'm having a hard time uh, hard time pull, pull, getting it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, God. Fuck you, Skype. You know? Really, fuck you. Fuck you and the horse you came in on. Yeah, fuck you and the ass and the keyboard and the mouse, and hopefully both can fit in that tiny little orifice hole you call an asshole. See, I can't can't do it. And there's no way to to put them on. 
I'm, I'm just trying to think if I, there's a way I can do it, and I don't think there is. Uh, add participants, send files and more. Let's see here. What, uh, add, uh, add people to this call? No. Oh, boy. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I'm hearing you okay, Alex. I know you're hearing me okay, but you're not coming through on the, the other line. You're not coming through on a line that I can, I can uh, put you on. Uh, so that's the same reason, same problem that yeah. Charlene was having. Having the same problem Charlene was having, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so Back to before that, and uh, I wonder, you know, let's say uh, slavery did still exist in a confeder in a neo confederacy of 2018. Yeah, uh, it wouldn't have existed for much longer on account well, of the fact John that they would just have. John Rockwell is trying to call same problem. Yeah. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, there is... Wait a minute. No, wait a minute. Now, there is... Hold on a second. Now, I've got both John Rockwell uh, and, uh, uh, and, and Vernon on the line. Hold on a second. Let me go back to Brian a uh, second. Would you two guys hang up and call me? Okay, sure. and let me see if I can add you to it. Okay. Okay. Right, so so now, I'm on the me, phone now. Yeah. So let me uh, go here. There we go. Are you getting me at all? Yeah, I'm, ge I'm getting you, John. And now I'm waiting for these other guys to call oh, back crap. to see. Yep. There we go. We can now we can add them to the group. Now we're fine. There we go. Yeah. Well, I don't see anybody, yeah, yeah. but oh, here we go. It's here starting. we go. Here we go. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's Thomas. Hello, Tom. <laughs> and How you doing, Tom? <laughs> where's, Good to see you. Where's Brian? This too. Good question. Yeah, Brian didn't call. Anyway. Oh dear. Yeah. Calling soon. Yeah, I well, I thought I picked up on him. Huh. You know. Here we go. Add him to the group. I call. just got in from outside. I, I guess you've been having this problem all night. I I think this was a problem. Charlene, you can try now too. I think this was a problem with the way we originally were set up here, you know. Oh. Uh, and now it seems to be working fine. I think if Charlene calls right now, she'd probably get get in as well. So you know. I see that. I can't see your video feed, Alex. You can't see my video feed. No, I can't. Yeah, I can't so either. I. It just has a Gabnet logo. Yeah. Really? Uh, there. How's that? Nah, yeah. not really. Not really. You can't see me. Nope. I'm seeing everybody. Oh, you're seeing everybody. And you're on, you're on Skype, <laughs> right? Are you, uh, Vernon? Yeah, I'm on the phone, but I've also got my tablet looking at Gabnet. Oh, no, no, but that, uh, that you would, you oh, okay, would see I'm me. Not. Okay, you too. And oh, here, might as well just go on there. Then. Here, comes, uh, here comes Charlene. <laughs> I can add her to the call. But, oh, there we go. But none of you can see me. Nope. Wow. I'm on Skype. No. I, I mean, we know what you look like, Alex. So don't worry about it. You know what I look like, yeah. We love you, Alex. We don't need to see you. You know, just yeah. talk. <laughs> I don't know. This may just be some kind of screw-up tonight, you know. It sounds like it. It looks like it, yeah. Yeah, but why isn't it? The, uh, oh, I know it might be the problem. Hold on a second. Let me go up to Tools, mm -hmm. Options. Let Ooh. me go to Video He's Settings. He's getting technical on us. I know. Uh, video Settings, I'm there. There, Charlene. Uh, there she is. Yeah, yeah we see yeah, her. Yeah, but you, none of you can see me. I no. see you. Yeah. Oh, you can. See, you, I can't. No, but you can see me on your iPad because you're you're not using yeah. you're not looking at me on Skype, are you, Vernon? No, I'm looking at you on YouTube. Oh, right. That's yeah. that's not uh, they. But they not can't they Skype. can't see me on Skype. No. Lovely okay. logo. That's it. <laughs> oh fuck them, you know. Uh, why can't you? Now the question is why you can't see me. Hmm. Um, uh, nah, 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 nah. Can't sabe, amigo. No idea. You know what I'm gonna do? <laughs> what I'm gonna do? We may as well do this to just test this out. I'm gonna sign out of everybody. Okay. Oh. And yeah. and uh, then I'm going to close down Skype and then I'm going to relaunch it. And I want you guys to uh, then call me back. Okay. okay. And let's see we what happens to that. Okay. All right. So I'm closing down Skype. All right. I'm going to go uh, sign out of Skype. 
Okay, now I'm going to sign in again. Okay. There we go. Wait a minute. Uh, let, me, let me just put my picture up so that you can see me while this is going on. Uh, and uh, wait a minute. Not now. Not now. Okay. All right. All right. And uh, um, I'm online. Let's see if these people are going to call me now. Let me get rid of that. Uh, hide conversation. Okay. Oh, uh, uh, okay. Okay. And Brian Ludwig. I'm adding Brian to the group. Okay. And let's see if anybody else calls and what happens to them. Uh, oh, I can see it. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, it's only three of us again. Right. But now if uh, Charlene and John will call, uh, maybe we can see if that will work. No. Damn it. Answering this call will put the... Oh, no, somebody's calling on the old thing. They're calling on the old... No, you can't call on that old uh, thing. What, you can't call... You have to make it as an original call here. Okay? Yeah, go to contacts. You go to contacts, go to GabNet Live, and dial that way. Here we go. Here comes um, Vernon. Vernon, are you calling using the phone or using the Skype? Vernon? I'm using Skype. Okay. All right. So he, you came on okay. So we got three people. Yeah. Let's come on, John Rockwell. Come on, Charlene. Let's do it. We want to make sure that this isn't fucked up. Okay. So uh, what's that? Anyway. <laughs> uh, and, and we keep the audience. We keep the large audience because they love to see me fail. They just love to see technical problems. Uh, but we need uh, other people to call, folks, so I can make sure this works okay. It seems to be okay now. And you can see me, too, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Yeah. Oh. I'm playing Skype on Yeah. Oh, of course, you're breaking up on us a little bit there, uh, uh, Vernon, because you're using Skype in a place where you haven't got a lot of bandwidth, unfortunately. Uh, we love you back home when you've got your Morse code and everything. Uh, <laughs> oops, he's hanging up. Come on, where's John Rockwell? Come on, John, give us a call. Charlotte, Charlene, try again. Here we go. Uh, this is this is um, Vernon, probably calling by phone, right? Right, Vernon? Yeah. 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 My bandwidth just really sucks here. Yeah, it's terrible. It's terrible. It's a clusterfuck. Anyway. Uh, well, we'll wait and see if John calls or Charlene calls. I, 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 there should be no reason why they won't call. But uh, Vernon, you're calling from your hotel, aren't you? Yeah, I'm out on the balcony. Actually, it's starting to rain. But we did get Ver <laughs> we did get Vernon in there on Skype, so we I can do more than a couple. Yeah, those hotels they only use Wi-Fi, and a lot of their a lot of hotels their connection sucks. It's not just you. They're getting Vernon. they're getting they're all getting better though. Uh, and pretty soon we're going to have like, you know, like we have Wi-Fi now in the uh, subways and not just at stations, but between stations. So, yep. you know, it's it, it, pretty soon we're going to be a completely Wi-Fi society. And it's all going to be it's all going to be free, actually. You know, so. It's, I had to pay extra for Wi-Fi here. Oh, really? Well, they should give you your money back. Agreed. <laughs> where's where's Tom? Where's uh, where's John? And where's uh, Charlene? Huh? I have no idea. Well, uh, Char uh, may I say to Charlene, call us. Um. What is this? Sign into chat. What's that about? Okay, here we go. Add the group. Okay, it's all working fine now. It's all working fine now. All right. Yeah. Ah, there we go. It was I. Yeah. I, I had to simply yeah. relaunch my Skype, and it. There you uh, go. And we're fine. Oh, good. Okay, we can keep doing well, the program like we normally do it. You know. Charlene and I had a very nice talk for a minute or two about about some things I can do for her to digitize some tapes, and then we realized, oh, we're not on the right line. <laughs> Let's get back on the. You know. So yeah. So I'm, I'm glad. Listen, Alex. Anytime you can get me work. I'm I'm happy. 
<laughs> Anytime I can get you. Oh, I got your work. Work. Yeah, I got work from Charlene. I got. Oh, really? I can digitize. I can digitize some old audio. Uh, Tim just posted. I do that a lot. Oh, Alex. I do that a lot. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. I, I, I was very, I, I was very proud of myself the other night in that I, I solved a uh, major uh, problem. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I solved a major problem uh, with. Um, um, uh, let me see here. Here's somebody else is calling. Oh, Renee Collins is calling. There okay, we go. And we're adding her to the group. Okay. The reason we're doing this, folks, in case you're wondering, is today is the first day that Skype has said they weren't going to be working. And all of a sudden, oh. I couldn't get this thing to work right. You know, that they weren't going to be supporting this this Skype 7.0. Uh, oh, look at that. And the version of this, uh, the, this version of their software. Yeah. So Starting uh, November 1st. And what happened today? Well, I couldn't. Nothing. All of a sudden, <laughs> I wasn't able to get all people on. But I just signed the whole system off, signed it back on. It's all working fine. So I don't think that was the problem. It was, I, I don't know. I, I have the old software. I don't know. Huh. I think you're. I, I, think, I think you're dancing on borrowed time. Well, wait, no, I don't think I'm dancing on borrowed time. They're dancing on borrowed time. If they, if, if, if they, if they don't let <laughs> yeah, me use this, it work that way. Yeah. You know, I they wish work for us. I wish we don't work for them. I, everybody out there, do your homework, would you please? Uh, sure. And, and find out, find out uh, what the what the fuck can be possibly be done to um, uh, uh, find an alternative system uh, to, to this, you know? Uh, it would be really nice. They're there, but they're, you know, huh? they're dig around. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know if there is a good viable other than Skype currently. Um, I've been doing a number of meetings with Zoom. Yeah, I've actually seen that. Yeah, but you can, yeah, it, it's, it's not like people can just call in, you know what I'm saying? It's not that simple a system. You have to be invited or something like that? Oh, you have to book a meeting and everybody oh, has to right, right, right. to the meeting and then you get yeah. a password. And that's not how Alex works, right? Right. right. That's, not right. How, that's not how Alex works. Yeah. That's, that's okay. how you want Never to Never mind. No, it was a good idea. Well, see, I said, so I heard on, on the same thing Tom was talking about, I heard that Apple's bringing out a 25-person FaceTime. And I brought it up to Alex, and he shot me down again because it's the kind of the same thing. You have to have yep. Apple in order to participate. You have to, so have, you have, to, have, you have, to have a Mac. Yeah. yeah. Really. So screwed that too. Two down. What else we got? <laughs> Bunch of proprietary cocksuckers. How many? How many? How, how much money could they uh, could they uh, get if they Pull opened out. it up to everyone, not just Apple users? <laughs> Tim Crook and his gaggly band of douchebags i uh, like tim cook uh, yeah. i can't why do you he's not just, like tim cook he, he just you know after 2011 he just got detached from uh from uh what's his name steve jobs's testicle so as far as i'm concerned <laughs> they both can go fuck themselves uh, a little hard for steve job to go fuck himself at this point well but, i uh, think i think look oh, he's I, he's on halloween he could like, you, you know it, 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 what, what's happened is tim cook has kept the doors open at apple okay yes. but he hasn't come up with anything really tim revolutionary cook. or new where i think if jobs were still around he'd be hunting for that next big thing you know well okay so tim cook was the one who let the watch go out because steve jobs didn't want it to go out but since the watch is out there really isn't anything that we know of i mean that we're seeing that that's on their horizon at this particular well, point the in time, watch, right the watch was on the horizon with steve jobs uh, uh, he hated the watch idea i know he maybe he hated it i love this watch i <laughs> by the way don't you like it mickey it's 11 uh, you know, I mean, yes. I I love this watch. I mean, I, I I go to sleep at night and I wake up in the morning. It tells me how much I slept and how much I was awake and how much I was restless. You know, okay. uh, and when I'm at the gym, yeah. it 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 Someone tells me it tells me my pulse rate and stuff like that. You know, it's and really good. Steve Jobs didn't want it out. Uh, he didn't want it. You know what was there was something else that he didn't want, but he eventually yeah, went for. It uh, and it and it worked too. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. So it's just, you know, he's not right all the time. Well, no, he wasn't right all the time, but I think that he 
he had a, a different way of running the company. I think now the company is being, all they're doing is they're refurbishing their ideas, okay? Because you say the Apple Watch was in the pipeline, it's just that Jobs wasn't completely sold on the idea. He might have been had he seen what the watch was going to turn out to be. Uh, mm. uh, but uh, I, I don't know. I mean, things like uh, the HomePods. I'm, as I know you have one. My my question to you is, you know, I think Amazon does a better job of it. Well, okay, let's talk about this. So there's a couple part, part portions of this. My big feeling is that Apple's looking for hardware to get rid of because they're trying to, I guess, more laser focus on a lot of their products. So. I could easily see Apple dumping all of their HomePod stuff and then calling Son Sonos, Sanos? Is it Sonos or Sonos? Sonos. Sonos. Calling them up and partnering with them because they've already got it. They've got it, the wireless down. They've got the speaker systems down. They've, they've got everything down. Apple mm -hmm. has already lost the hardware in this battle. So partner with somebody who else has already done it and release yourself to go do something else. Yeah. Let me stand up for a minute because I want to make my watch's rings all go together. Because at midnight it stops. <laughs> <laughs> we only have 10 more minutes. I only have 10 more minutes, but I have to stand up. Otherwise, it, it doesn't like me, you know. Uh, 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 by the way, I'm, I'm, happy, I'm happy to see Renee's dog over there. I've, I've heard you yeah. had one, but how cute. <laughs> what a and such a, and such, a, such a quiet and, uh, you know, it's collapsed crap. dog. <laughs> it's crashed dog. It's, a, it's very name? cute. It, 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 it looks like on the back of you, Pam, you have a cat too, because I see the, yeah. I see the little, yeah, yeah. It's a Hawaiian, it's a Hawaiian, cat, Hawaiian dog. I thought it was a great idea. Now that dog, oh, did you bring that dog over oh, from uh, California? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. How, did, all didn't you have to put them in like a rabies thing or something, or uh, you you had to keep them in? It's a, not like going to England it, or in something. In the house, right? no. It's, it, it's no, a, actually, it is. This is one of the, so. Oh, there's really? two, three things that actually has to happen. Number one is there's no rabies in Hawaii. Oh. A, and that's why you have such strict rules about bringing but, animals but, in. But, and it, and oh, okay. let's add to that though the question of what if all of a sudden rabies occurred? It you're on an well, island <laughs> and you're 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 you're. you're uh, How do you stop it? Yeah, yeah you, you fly the vaccine in really quickly. Yeah, I would, I guess, or I guess. would it flush itself out eventually if uh, nobody else was allowed in, mm. no other animal yeah. was allowed in, and let the rabies uh, virus. Of course, of course, you had itself. you had leprosy. Yeah. yeah, we already had that. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Volcanoes, hurricanes, that. leprosy. In, in fact, what, what's the, the what's the island that was the lepers island there? Uh, uh, Lanai was it? Lanai. No, it, wasn't, it was one yeah, of those. I think it was Lanai. Uh, well, I, I mean, it was the leper colony, yeah. yeah. Molokai. 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 You're right. Yeah, and I, and I think they still have lepers there, if I'm not mistaken. I don't think they do. Actually, you know what's there, just to let you guys know? A huge cat colony resort. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you know what? You so, know, no, you know what there was there, all, though? I do like, know about this. They're all fair. There right was a, 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 some guy owned the island. Oh, yeah, well... He owned the island. island. He owned the island, and what he did was he wanted to preserve the Hawaiian race, and so he took only pure Hawaiians and allowed them to live there uh, for free. Yes. And as long as they didn't mate with other people who were non-Hawaiians, because he wanted to maintain the purity of the Hawaiian. Because you go to Hawaii and you meet people and you say, "So what are you?" you say, well, I'm part Swedish, I'm part Hawaiian, I'm part Japanese, I'm part this, I'm part, part that, yeah. you know. Part Filipino. And that's Spanish. because that's because all these pe all these cultures went to went to Hawaii and fucked their brains out with the local natives and completely decimated the Hawaiian strain, as it were. I, so this guy I was out to preserve. Love. This guy was out to preserve it. What? I, I would actually, I would love to start a program where we DNA typed everybody on the island that thinks they're, that they've got Hawaiian blood in them, put all that in there, grab the, c condense it up to the people that are true Hawaiians, get their DNA, 
their sperm and their eggs. Yeah. <laughs> Freeze it all. I think we did <laughs> that though. We, we would find that the, uh, and I, I say this. Like you said, Polynesian, not Native American, because obviously as far as Native American is concerned, uh, Elizabeth Warren still well, wouldn't qualify. Well, what I was going to yeah. what I was going to say was if we, if we, if we had that test, what well, would, if you're listening, that was for you. What would come out, what would come out is, uh, that we would find out that Elizabeth Warren was the only true Hawaiian. Uh, but that was my there joke. That was like my 6%. joke. Yeah. What? I said by like six percent or some shit. Yeah. So I, I again, to, Phil, if you're listening, that joke was for you. I, I talk to to people here all the time, but the one thing I ask them, they they will tell you they know very few pure Hawaiians, mm -hmm. and they will say they one of them has said I've only met three in my entire forty years of living on the islands, and I'm like. Oh, that's not very. He could, they go. There's not many left, and that's why I was thinking. Let's just DNA everybody. Let's find the true Hawaiians. Yeah. Let's get their sperm, get their eggs, and then cryo on uh, cryogenically well, freeze the, it all. The, to the, the, the problem is, you probably aren't going to find them. You know, um, like saving the species. Not enough anyway. The, the, the only place you're going to find them is on Lanai if they, if that still if exists, still or Molokai if that still exists. So, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, it, it's just amazing that the the British just came across the plan. And I know well, we well, invaded it was, Hawaii. It, it was the it was the what do you call it? It was the evangelists. The uh, the what do you call it? The um, oh the Mormons here. The, the, no no the people, no the people that came and and figured they were going to take these heathens and uh, in fact they put the moo moo on them because they were running around <laughs> naked. You know, well, why put clothes on in in paradise, right? It's hot. And, and made them uh, mission, the missionaries. Off here. The missionaries, and in fact, yeah. the right. missionaries, the 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 relations of the missionaries own most of Hawaii. In they own way on, too much on of the it. big island of Hawaii. Like, could you buy your property that you're on, or did you have to lease it for a uh, hundred years? No. I, so there are areas where you're not allowed to own the land. Mm -hmm. um, but so, and you just get to lease it. And those are very extreme because houses. Because all of Oahu, or from what I understand, all of Oahu is leased. Like No, so, so part of that is the, China, the Japanese influx back in the 70s and 80s. Mm -hmm. um, in, in the United States, we believe that we should own the house and own the land, all right? Believe it or so not, I was there in the 60s, okay? I was there in the 60s, and I was told that most of the island of Hawaii was owned by these missionary families, and that if oh, yeah. you wanted to build a building or build a home or whatever, you had to put it on land which you didn't buy but that you leased for 100 leased. years. Right, okay. and that's how the... Um but those that's how the Mormons on, the, on Oahu have their... Uh, what is that place called? They have a whole... They own they own a lot of the eastern side of Oahu, right. and they shouldn't right. because they just showed up. It's not like it was supposed to be their land in the first fucking place, and they just took it. Yeah, and and that's what most of these people did. They just took the land, and they're still doing it too. But I don't know. It, I think they have a little bit of Asian influence in them because they think that white people are going to go away, and the problem is is. We don't go away. When when we go <laughs> when, we, when we go conquer something, Much like peanut butter, we stick to the roots. We of hang butter. out. Yeah. 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 We, Hundreds of years. And, now, and, someone explain that to white. And then we cover we cover a beautiful naked yeah, body. Yeah, Shirley, you're we, right. We cover a <laughs> perfectly like beautiful butter. naked body with a piece of giant cloth. You know, uh, and uh, that, by the way, is one of the reasons why some of the Hawaiians got wiped out because they got hit with uh, disease. That white man's diseases, right. and then those moo-moos were a disease catcher. Okay, that's a horrible yeah. thing. It's what we did to the American Indians. So yes, that's the, right. The whole, but the, the whole, Native Americans gave us Europeans syphilis. Right. Okay. Did they? I, I didn't. Yeah. I didn't know. Neil that. deGrasse Tyson said as much. I, I think, I've heard I think that. maybe I've heard he's that. wrong it was because on the Joe I, Rogan I, program. I know, and that's where I got uh, that information uh, well, from. Yeah, Joe Rogan is where I get all my information. Syphilis had to be around. Syph syphilis, no. Then. Syphilis the was a European disease. Spaniards, syphilis. I think, yeah. uh, I'll go look uh, it up, but I think syphilis was a European disease. To be honest with you. Anyway, hey, I gotta go. Uh, you know.
Uh, but uh, uh, I thank you all, and thank God it turns out that it wasn't Skype behaving badly. Thank it God was it wasn't me. My <laughs> system behaving badly. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, uh, Vernon. Uh, if you can hear us, uh, Charlene, oh, thank you very much. Uh, Tom, thank you. Uh, John Rockwell, thank you. Yep. And Renee in Hawaii, thank you so very much. And thanks for calling me so that I could see that this thing worked and that it wasn't uh, uh, it wasn't Skype fucking with me. Uh, give everybody a big wave goodbye, would you? Okay, there they go, folks. Uh, and I'm Alex Bennett. Uh, that's our citizen panel for tonight. We finally, I, I was so paranoid tonight that it wasn't going to work because um, uh, Skype, as I say, has gone to, a, you know, is trying to do away with the system that we use. And, well, anyway, it doesn't matter. The fact was we finally got it working. I'm Alex Bennett. Jack uh, Bishop is next with The Intersection, followed at 1 o'clock Eastern Daylight Time by Connections. Tomorrow night, Damian Chaplin will be back. He took the night off. He'll be back uh, with his program at 9.30, and then I'll be here at 10 o'clock. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>